Ah, it's gonna be a great day. So I just learned another fun lesson, which is that I had been folding this up and storing it up here. It was, I thought, a really great spot. But what happened was because it was kind of crunched, I guess, now I was storing it, it got a little wobbly and now the magnets aren't straight and they don't stay closed completely. So we're going to have to find a new way to store this. From Amazon, it was just a, like, for a house. And then I sewed this part. So it was very DIY, as most things in this van are, but she works. <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see it right now, but see that little spot over there? That's a moth. And uh, it must have gotten in in those five seconds that I pulled the bug screen down. So we're gonna have a fun time trying to catch it right now. See how this goes. Okay. Okay, before any more bugs get in here. Goodness. Did you know that it's illegal to sleep in your vehicle in North Carolina, Florida, Virginia, and Tennessee? Recently, Tennessee became the first state to make it a felony to camp on local public property such as parks. According to the director of the National Homeless Law Center, these types of laws have doubled or tripled digits percentages over the last 10 years. I do want to say the law requires them to issue a warning and give 24 hours to vacate before arrest, but then the felony can actually land someone in jail for six years. This has definitely made parking in Nashville the last few days much more on edge, and that's why tonight I chose to stay at a hotel. There it is. It's that simple. It is midnight right now. I'm going to go to sleep right away, wake up super early, get out of here, and that's it. So I'll see you in the morning. So when the sun comes up, I start the van and drive to what has quickly become my favorite hidden gem in Nashville, Cedar Hill Park. While this may look so incredible and relaxing, there is a thing about leaving your door open when you live in a van. You sacrifice privacy and solitude for the beautiful views, but people rarely talk about that in other pretty pictures by the ocean. It's why I so rarely open my sliding door, and while these ducks were so precious and so cute coming up to say hello, as an introvert, it can take a lot of energy to meet new people and have the same conversations every few minutes. But today, looking at this view, I knew I couldn't pass it up and it gave me the motivation to finally do my dishes. And these ducks sat with me the whole time, which made me ridiculously happy. Hi. Oh, is this their shop? Uh, no, it's just my house. <laughs> oh, your house? Yeah. I just live in here. I'm just doing dishes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that's very creative. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Like oh my god. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. I was you really like you're a photographer. <laughs> I'm a vlogger. I do YouTube. Uh, can you put me on there? <laughs> you want me? Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> So what is a little more difficult to see in this video that's happening throughout my day is that I had just recently posted two videos on Instagram that were getting a lot of hate and my phone was just buzzing with mean comments all day. Crazy comments, honestly, that even though rationally I knew they weren't valid or fair or true, still weighed on me throughout the day. But do you know what I came to realize? That one video was an ad for Amazon. <laughs> that is something I should be so proud of. And I realized how much I was dwelling on the negative and how much I had to be grateful for and look forward to. So I actually, about a month ago, started a folder of all the positive comments I receive. Right now I have 105 photos that help me remember why I do what I do. One morning this week, I woke up to some really nasty comments and it just killed my excitement for the day. I immediately opened that folder and I started editing this video, excited for Sunday, excited and alive again to do what I love, which is share the pieces of the world I get to see with all of you. 
Seeing how effective the folder was, I decided to start a gratitude journal this week and started to truly work to overcome my tendency to dwell on how negative people see me. Honestly, a few months ago, I would have found it a bit stereotypical self-help book corny, but genuinely, I feel that I have seen the impact it has had on my happiness in a normal day and my All outlook right. on life. Time to get some work done. All right, now we close this. Uh, anyway, we are off to start our adventure for the day. So it has just come to my attention that I have forgotten to lock my table again. So fun times, fun times. It just slams right out there. Um, the supports are not meant for that, but here we are. One day I will learn. Um, one day I'll be like that person with a whole checklist up here of like, did you lock your table? Did you close your max air fan? Did you take down your ukulele? All of those things that I constantly forget. Okay. Oh my God. Ah, I missed. Okay. Ah! They're driving, they're driving. Okay. Seatbelts forgotten. <laughs> the things we do to not let our vans fall to pieces. <laughs> hey, what you doing with the girl like that? Oh yeah, this is how I take the karaoke up the road. So many things that you wish you knew. So many walls up I can't break through. Now I'm sick. Okay. Now that that's over, we're gonna go on a very fun adventure. I have some work to do, but I like to, I mean, it's kind of hard to have a perfect work-life balance for anyone, but living in a van, I try to turn my workspaces into a travel adventure or something. Um, so we're gonna go somewhere fun to go get some free Wi-Fi. So I'm excited to show you. Welcome to the Gaylord Opryland, located right next to the Grand Old Opry and the most insane hotel I have ever visited. Not only is there waterfalls, but there is a river through the hotel that you can take a boat tour on. It is the largest non-casino in-hotel exhibition space in the United States with over 700,000 square feet of meeting spaces. It has nine acres of indoor gardens, a golf course, oh, and the company recently announced a $90 million expansion of an indoor-outdoor luxury water park called sound waves. I actually did stay here once in 2011 when I was in eighth grade. I was competing in a pageant. It was the first state pageant I ever won and I practiced for internationals every single day like crazy. I wanted to win so bad. At the time it meant everything to me and then I didn't place at all. Honestly, I'm starting to get a little bit emotional. I'm tearing up a little bit, partially because they're playing a very sad song, which doesn't help. Um, but just thinking about the girl that I was when I was here and how I walked away feeling like I had failed. And, you know, it's like at the moment, the school that you have is everything to you and you've given everything in your heart to it. And then you lose. Like we can be nice about it and be like, you grow from every experience. Yes, of course. Um, but you lose at the end of the day. And looking back on that day of walking out of this hotel in 2011, I just, I'm just really happy and really fulfilled right now. And I'm in the middle of Tennessee, wandering around a hotel, about to do my job here. That's crazy. So, you know, I just feel like things pass you by and then you'll find what's meant for you. And I really feel like this is meant for me. So I finally found the perfect spot to sit and get some work done and stare at one of the many wonders of the world, the back of a waterfall. It is so cool that I used to have to sit in a school building or an office to get work done and right now I am working in a fake rainforest. Honestly, most days of the week I am just sitting in my van and working but sometimes it can drive me a little crazy. So doing something like this is just really refreshing. It's as simple as it seems Twinkle in your eyes The way that time slows down When you kiss me As we fall asleep In a bed of butterflies Just close your eyes and then You'll see it You don't ever have to look too far You don't have to Cover up your scars
And my last stop here in the Gaylord was for a quick lunch before heading out for the night. Lately, I found that making dinner in my van just takes so much time that now that I'm out of debt, I would rather just pay an extra few dollars for the convenience of eating out and not building up dishes in my van. After appreciating the beautiful and peaceful scenery, I took a deep breath and relaxed before getting ready for a night out on Broadway. Honestly, I still get a little nervous around people when they're drinking heavily. I actually don't drink myself and when I was a kid and visited Broadway here in Nashville, a drunk guy came up and grabbed me, hugged me, and wouldn't let me go until my mom literally forced him to. So I'm really thankful that my friend David agreed to hang out with me tonight and Broadway is one of the most popular attractions in Nashville. It's known for its honky tonks, live music, tourist shops, and more that is just alive from 10 a.m. to 3 a.m. every Every day and my favorite place in all of Nashville is here wild horse saloon because tonight I am going to learn to line dance let's begin our level line dance my name is Scala this is Mac thanks so much for joining us tonight how many of you at your first time here in Nashville all right well welcome any first time line dancers <laughs> Hands up. We're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna take our right foot. You're gonna step over to the right. Right, left, right. Left, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's hear some noise for our dancers out here. This store had me obsessed with cowgirl outfits, but unfortunately I did not buy any. And neither did David, he actually lives in a van too, usually in Los Angeles though, but he did actually used to live here in Nashville. So he already has a fancy cowboy hat. Um, but I started to think with all the options of boots here, there was just no such thing as having too many pairs. But van life really makes you more conscious of what you're buying because you can only have so much space for everything. I have saved so much money on buying things because I have to say to myself, but will this fit in the van? It's honestly, I kind of call it forced minimalism. Something I've noticed about how I've been traveling lately is that it encourages me to give into fast fashion culture because of how I want to buy cowgirl boots now, but then when I get to the next city, I'll want to buy the outfit that fits that city. A few weeks ago, I wanted a new outfit for the Kentucky Derby, and now I want a new outfit for a Renaissance Fair. So while I wanted to buy the boots, not only did the $300 price tag stop me, but so did the fact that I live in a tiny van and it would likely end up in the trunk for a few months after I leave the city. But nonetheless, that did not stop me from ending my night with a cowgirl fashion show and trying on every variation I could find. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and I'll see you next week.